Hello, Gasheads, and welcome back to the Rovers Report, where you join us and pre-season is officially over. It's into the serious stuff and Rovers will be taking on Portsmouth this Saturday away at Fratton Park. Uh, I'm getting very excited for this now, Tom. You know, we've got pre-season behind us and we can get into the real deal. Uh, how, how are you doing today, mate? And uh, how are you feeling about the new season? Yeah, all good, thanks, mate. Uh, just, yeah, I'm sort of echoing your sentiments. Really excited for Pompey. Um, obviously, we're going to be speaking about a lot of new signings that have been made since we last spoke. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident going into this season now uh, off the back of a pretty good um, pre-season. Um, you know, we played some really uh, strong teams and performed very well. We got some good results at the same time. So it's looking promising, mate, but it is Rovers, so you never know. Mm-hmm. Um so uh, yeah, I think it's um yeah, just echoing what you said really. It's it's exciting going into the season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll do sort of a you know, more of a pre-season summary towards the latter stages of the video. But I think, you know, we're recording this at quarter to six on a third, on Tuesday evening. Uh, and the big news coming out of Rovers um is that it appears we are going to be re-signing Connor Taylor permanently. Um I can see the smile on your face there, Tom, and I think you probably you know, share the same feeling as most Rovers fans. Yeah. In typical Rovers fashion, it's sort of been leaked by a a, a Instagram post from our owner, who has then taken it down quickly. But hey, I mean, what do you make of this, Tom? Because for, for me, this is could be potentially the signing of the transfer window for us. Completely concur with that sentiment. I think um, sort of the missing piece in the pu- of the puzzle, really. Um, I think we have enough about us elsewhere, but it, we clearly lacked. I think Kramer, oh, I hope I pronounced his surname right, um, is, uh, uh, yeah, Kramer's a really good signing at centre-half, but I think Taylor adds that EFL experience and, you know, we know exactly what he's about. Strong in the air, really good playing out from the back, which obviously seems to be our sort of way of playing um, under Joey now. So a- an excellent signing um, for £300,000 reported by the Bristol Post, uh, medical book for tomorrow. Um, pretty much confirmed from that Instagram post from YL. It's um it's a it's the potent has the potential to be one of Rover's best signings um since the turn of the millennium, to be honest. Um no, I agree, I agree. I think we, we all know the potential he has. Uh, um so I think he's also a level headed character. You could see that in the promotion season. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I think it's a it's a fantastic signing, someone to partner Wilson, um, perhaps a little bit quicker than Wilson. Um, but also with the sort of that ability to be strong in the air, I think that's incredibly important. We've really missed out at the back since uh, since Taylor went back to Stoke. Yeah, I think there's so many positives to this signing, isn't there? You know, the obvious one is his ability and what he brings to us in terms of defensive attributes. Uh, another one is if you think about the depth of our you know our centre back options now, as we've mentioned previously, this is a position of the pitch that we really lacked you know, depth and quality in. If if it is true that he is signing, I'm very happy with those centre-back choices there. So, you know, other things for me is it's a real statement of intent. Spending, th- well, reported £300,000 on a centre-back for, you know, what was last season, a, a lower League One team. You know, Whale and Joey Barton are obviously saying to each other, let's have a real go at this. Again, reportedly, we've beaten Barnsley and Plymouth Argyle to his signature which, you know, for a player of his ability, he obviously believes that we're going places. Um, and finally, one which, you know, may get a bit overlooked and it might not, not necessarily come true, but, you know, you think about Connolly last season, he, he wasn't quite at it. Uh, and we know how well him and Taylor complemented each other in that promotion season. So, you know, that that could be a sort of something that goes under the radar a bit that, you know, pulls Connolly's standards up a bit. But, you know, in terms of how important he'll be to us in the in the um, upcoming season, I think he's going to be a real rock at the back. You know, he's got the physicality of Wilson, but then he's also got a bit of extra speed about him. You know, he's fantastic from set pieces, both offensively and defensively. So I'm I'm absolutely over the moon with this, mate. Like I think you said, I think potentially, probably, yeah. Well, for me, the signing of the summer if it happens. Um, I don't know if you've got anything more you want to say on that, mate, or we will move on to the other sort of breaking news from today. And it is typical Rovers fashion, isn't it? It's, you get no news and then like London buses, two come along at once. 
And uh, that is, of course, the news that there is a potential Kuwaiti investor sort of joining ranks with Whale. Um, you know, I think as our resident uh, finance officer here, do you want to sort of give your thoughts on this, mate? And, uh, you know, just sort of, yeah, give your thoughts and uh, let the people know what's going on. Yeah, of course. It was reported by the Bristol Post this morning that um, Kuwaiti investor by the name of Hussein Al Said um, is, I believe, in talks to um, yeah, sort of purchase a majority stake in the club, um, as well as majority stake in Dwayne Sports, which I believe is the holding company for Rovers. Um, yeah, that's also pretty interesting. I, I think it's quite hard to find some information on him at the moment, but. I fully trust YL in terms of doing the background checks and due diligence on any other uh, sort of potential investments. It's exciting times. And um, I think just to mention with the connotator signing, that would seem to be outside of any potential external investment as well. So with the sort of additional um, firepower coming from um, new ownership, I think it's an exciting time. But yeah, I, I I don't really know too much about this man. Um, I think clearly why I was been sort of searching for additional funding, um, despite the fact that he's he's put a lot of money into the club anyway. You know, don't forget the fact that three years ago he wiped off all the all the debt the club had, I believe. Uh was supposed to reporting that why I was put about twenty million pounds of his own cash into the club. So I'm also quite encouraged by the fact that why I wants to stay on as club president. I think he definitely has the club's best interest at heart. Yes, I think um, the evolution has perhaps taken a little bit longer than expected. Um, but I think, as I said, deep down, he clearly you know loves the club. So it's an interesting one, mate. What do you think about it? Because um, it sort of came out of the blue completely. Yeah, mate. Yeah. It's certainly taken me by surprise. But, you know, I think on the surface of it, it seems like a wise move, you know, Wales, obviously, a clever businessman, you, you know, despite what people might think, you don't get to have that much wealth without, you know, a bit of business acumen. And I think for him, I'm probably thinking, you know, get someone else in, spread the risk, um, and also allow Rovers to have a bit of a cash injection from a different source. So I think if he, you know, he, he in the way he acts, in the way he behaves, he clearly, like you said, has an interest and an affinity with Rovers. So it doesn't really concern me that he's bringing someone else in. Um, you know, I'll have to wait and see when we sort of find out who this man is and, you know, what his sort of movements have been prior to his interest in Rovers. But on the surface of it, it seems like a positive it seems like a positive thing, you know, especially with news earlier this year of the fruit market developments, um, which, you know, I'm under no illusion could take a long time. But having come from a you know, a period of Rovers fan base where you know for 15 years we had nothing false promises to actually have something moving in the right direction it's a good thing isn't it mate so yeah I think unless you've got anything more to say on that we'll probably just put a cap on that I think you know you've pretty much summed it up perfectly um, and if we can then move on to just you know Rovers pre-season which I think from my accounts has probably been probably been the best one I've seen since I've followed Rovers, you know, I can't remember the stats exactly, but to my mind, the only games we lost were to uh, Europa League Braga uh, and then mm. Cardiff City in a 60-minute game where, you know, the majority of our players were academy prospects. So, yeah, all in all, mate, I I'm very happy with this pre-season. Uh, the team seems to have come back fitter than ever. Barton said that himself. Um, and everything just seems to have gelled. You know, sometimes you takes a couple of weeks for the team to get back to it. Looks a bit rusty, but I'm very confident going into this Portsmouth game, mate. How do you assess pre-season? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think it's been really impressive. I've been particularly pleased with the front four. Sinclair on the left, Thomas on the right, and um, Brown playing behind Collins, who's playing as uh, number nine like he did in the 21-22 season. Obviously, he played in sort of multitude of positions last year. Uh, one caveat I do have would be that we had a really good preseason under Buckle, and we all know how that ended. Um, so, um, yeah, I think history hopefully doesn't repeat itself in that regard. But I think it's been a really, really pleasant sort of preseason to watch. Um, but we're sort of playing some really free flowing football, and our, our movement in the final third is incredible. I have to say, I've been really impressed. So, 
Um, obviously, pre-season and the actual season itself are two completely different things when it comes to the intensity, especially. So that's going to be perhaps maybe a little bit telling. Pompey are a really good side. We know that. They always make some really good signings um, and they're always going to be pushing um, towards the top end of the table. So it's going to be a really tough ask to go there and get something. But I think after this pre-season, I'm, I'm, I'm confident we could well do, especially with the signing of Taylor. And he'll obviously be in the squad for Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Matt. And if you look for me at the number of players that have come out of this pre-season with positive, you know, positive reviews, and they're definitely going into this season on an upward trajectory. You know, you come from the back and you sort of think Luca Hall's can he's you know consistently performed well, and he looks like a man now. You see the videos of him in and around the training ground. He looks like he's you know cemented his place, and he's a local lad, obviously. And you know, you got like you said, the, the front four have been on unbelievable form. So for me, it's, it's really positive. I think yeah, potentially the one of the players who I don't want to single out, but you know, I think with the other additions that have come in, you might have thought they've had a, a bit of a poor preseason. Is James Belshaw? Uh, you know, that sounds harsh, and I don't, I don't mean he's had a poor preseason, but you know, I just think with Cox coming in, um, you know, we obviously signed the keeper Hall from. Well, I think he was a free agent, but was the last at Southampton, um, and then Jed Ward, you know, has obviously gone out on loan, and and that's something I did actually want to speak to you about, mate, and just sort of have you cast your eye over what's happened and you know, sort of give your thoughts on who you think might be first team, um, what you think our plan is with with Cox and Hall, because, you know, Cox is an England under-19 international, um, was back up to David Rare last season for Brentford. So I wouldn't imagine that he's coming in to play back up to Belshaw. Um, and then, sorry, a, a lot of questions here, mate, but finally, where you think that leaves James Belshaw? I think ultimately he's come here to compete with Belshaw for number one, as you said. Um, I think, yeah, he's obviously an England under 20 international, was on the bench at Brentford, I think, 18 times last season in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a player like of that calibre to come to the League One club isn't going to be sat on the bench. So, yeah, I, I don't think it really spells the end of Belly's time as number one. I think they, it's going to be sort of neck and neck um, in terms of, the competition because I do still believe Belly's good enough to be a League One keeper, sort of top six League One keeper. But I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like Cox had a very good sort of first half um, of his debut, I guess, in the second half of that um, yeah. Yeah. Swansea game. Um, and apparently, I think he was a little bit wobbly playing out from the back against Chesterfield. Although defence seemed to be a little bit wobbly as well doing that. I think Barton's clearly brought him in to try and do that, um, play out from the back um, with the defence. And yeah, I, it's it's a weird one because I think Belshaw was quite unlucky with the defence last season, uh, especially with the lack of aerial stability um, and the aerial presence. I think it was he was unfortunate. And yeah, he made a few mistakes, um, notably against Exeter, home and away. Uh, but he did make some brilliant saves at times and kept us in games. I think it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Um, yeah, I think it's quite clear that the Joey's keep trying to give him a lot more competition. And um, I can see certainly see Cox starting against Pompey, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. You know, I think Joey Barton would be unwise to burn his bridges with Belshaw, um, especially when our other options, if you took him out, would be the inexperienced Matthew Hall and Jed Ward, who, you know, I actually think he probably could come into the team, but that is a risk. Uh, I think it's probably just smart from Joey Barton keeping competition there. Um, I think his aim will probably be to have Cox as our number one for all year. But by bringing Cox in, it will make um, Belshaw step up his game. He'll have to be at his best. Um, and then if Cox does have a mistake in him or you know he has a bad patch of games, then bring Belshaw back in. Um, so, yeah, I think for me, the the whole one is slightly odd. Uh, you know, that came out of nowhere. And he's not really, a, you know, I think he's younger than Jed Ward. Um, so, you know, maybe that's one of those ones where, because Jed Ward's gone out on loan, we need someone in case of injury. Um, and I think, I believe it is a short-term deal anyway. So, you know, I guess that's probably more sort of logistical than performance-based. But... 
I really want to see Jed Ward, you know, in and around that team, but it's a weird one with a goalkeeper, isn't it? It's not like a centre back or a winger where you know you can rotate them. You tend to keep your goalkeeper as the same as long as possible. So it makes sense to send Jed Ward out on loan uh, to the National League. Uh, and hopefully in a couple of years' time, you know, we see him starting for the gas. Um, but yeah, so I think if we move on now, mate, to a bit of a Pompey preview. Uh, you touched on it earlier that, you know, they're always a strong team, aren't they? Fratton Park's always a difficult place to go. Uh, and for me, they are actually, you know, currently the winners of the transfer window. Uh, I think some of their signings, in particular, Regan Paul from Lincoln, who, you know, for this level is an outstanding centre-back. Uh, he has been for Lincoln, you know, the last couple of seasons. He shined at MK Dons uh, and I think Newport previously to that, he performed well. So, you know, they got Colby Bishop, Colby Bishop up top, uh, you know, Marlon Pack in the middle, who, let's be honest, despite his previous clubs, is a, you know, championship quality midfielder. Uh, and yeah, you know, going to Fratton Park is never an easy task. Uh, especially with our record at theirs and on the opening day. Uh, despite all of that, I still feel confident, mate. Honestly, I do. I, I think we can go there, uh, not even nick something. You know, I think the hunger and the energy in our team at the moment just honestly suggests to me, and maybe it's being naive, but I think we can go there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, you know, get an early goal, quiet that crowd down. And I'll, I think our players will be on cloud nine. So... You tell me, mate, am I being too optimistic? Uh, do you need to ground me a bit here? Or, you know, am I actually living in the, in the real world? A few to live statistically, yeah, maybe so. But um, <laughs> Always I think the stats, we can... man, aren't you, mate? Always the stats, yeah. man. <laughs> can, we can live in dreamland slightly. Um, I think, uh, no, I, I think it's actually quite realistic that we could get something... Pompey, yeah, that as you said, they've had a cracking window and at Fratton Park, it always seems to be a little bit of fortress, especially when we're there. I don't think we've won there um, for a while. I mean, not since they sort of came down from the Prem. They've been in the sort of lower divisions. We definitely haven't won there. Uh, I think we were robbed of a point there last season, to be honest. Um, there was some shoddy refereeing going on in the second half. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think I'd still take a point I think first game of the season, typically how we sort of have this sort of, um, what's the word, voodoo sort of situation going on. Um, but at the same time, we've had a really good pre-season. I'd like to mention big John Marquis has had a really good pre-season, especially I think he'll be really up for it against Pompey, considering how his time went there. Are you, um, are you starting him? Just a yes or no for me, mate. Are you putting him up front? No, I'm not. I'm I'm starting with that front four that I mentioned earlier that, that have started most preseason games, and I think Marquis can make a real impact off the bench away at a team like Pompey if we're still in the game, uh, which I think we could well be. I, I I take a point, and that would probably be my prediction. I think one all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, my my light's just gone out. I might not work professional, but <laughs> <laughs> I just wrapped that <laughs> There we go. Good as always. That's not even coming back on. Um. Oh yeah, so if, if for me, I'd definitely take a point. I think, but I don't know. It's like I said, I just have this optimistic feeling within me. I think there's a good buzz around the club. Um, but you guys definitely let us know what, how you think that game will go. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have a video out later this week, sort of talking more in depth about the you know the fixture. Hopefully, we'll have some more concrete evidence and news about Connor Taylor uh, and any other signings. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Tom, for, for joining me once again, mate. Uh, and we'll catch you later.